Wolves are about to make a very exciting signing. They may already have done it by the time you watch this video. And that signing is Mateus Nunes, a really, really talented Portuguese midfielder. This guy's very good. And tell me all about this and how it might work for Wolves. Can they be in the top six? I've got Tim Spears. Hello. Athletic writer, uh, star, man. Okay. Yes. <laughs> right, let's talk about Nunes and what he's going to do to Wolves, right? So we know that Wolves have ambitions to be in the top six. Last season, they finished 10th. Uh, yeah, you tell me about Wolves last season. 10th, not very good. Bruno Lars tried a few things, didn't get very well. So kind of went back to Nuno's counter-attacking, fairly dull style. Hence, very good defensively, but a lack of goals. Same old story, really, for the past few years. What we've seen this season as well is a swap from like a 3-4-3 kind of shape with outside forwards with a striker here to selling even corner Cody's gone. They're playing a back four and it's more of a 4-2-3-1. It looks like it'll be a mix between a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3. But what Nunes does is he can play as part of a midfield two. Um, it could possibly play as a 10. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have thought it personally, but what do you no, think? Pro probably in a three pushing forward. Not sure he's a 10. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a really big change for Wolves in pre-season. They've played 3-4-3 exclusively since 2017, pretty much every single game. Um, but they have become a little bit predictable, you know, very, very good defensively. They've been in the top five in the league for three of those four seasons for their defensive record, which is very, very good. But in the past two seasons, they've averaged less than a goal a game. Um, so what Bruno Lage has tried to do is make them more attacking. He's gone exclusively 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1, um, but needs a couple of key additions to really make that work. Enter. Enter Nunes. Nunes. Oh, that was a nice segue. So here we go, this is Nunes, according to Smarter Scout. His carrying dribble volume is very high, so he's very good at keeping the ball, dribbling past players. Um, his link-up play is really high as well, so it's very impressive actually. You can see that his defending intensity is massive, so uh, Bruno Lage's teams work very hard out of possession. That's what they want to do. This gives them a different dynamic because the midfield balance then, as they have Ruben Neves and Moutinho, looks a bit like this. Well, Moutinho, lovely player. Yeah, like I said, they're, they're just a little bit predictable. I mean, Moutinho, yeah, as you say, he's lovely. Uh, very good at controlling and recycling possession. Yeah. Um, but then uh, Neves behind him, very good at progressive passing as we see, shot volume, I mean he gets 10 shots off a game from range and, and, and scores very rarely, but still. Um, what, while he's very good technically, Ruben Neves, he can't play further up the field like Nunes can because of his lack of physical attributes. So he's not very quick at all, um, he's not got much dynamism in, in his running, so they've really lacked that player to link from midfield to attack. Leander Dendonka is the third midfielder who, who does kind of break those lines in a physical sense because he's very tall gets in the box, he runs all day long, but he lacks the technical attributes to, to really link the play again into Nunes. Yes, yeah, so to compare them like side by side, this is Neves here, you can see exactly what he's good at, shooting from range, progressive passing, long balls out from the back. And if we go to Nunes, clearly this gives them a much better balance. And the thing with Nunes, where Neves lacks a lot of agility uh, and mobility, <laughs> Uh, th what you get in Nunes is someone who has all of that, like he's really, really athletic. This guy here, and this is what he looks like here. Um, this is an example of Nunes playing for Sporting Lisbon, where he often plays as part of a midfield two in a 3-4-3 actually. So he know he can do that for Wolves should they want to change systems back to what they're doing previously. Now what you see here is a player who likes to go forwards. He takes the play forwards and makes things happen, turns defence into attack very quickly, um, which is something that Neves and Moutinho can't really do. So this is Nunes here, the ball is played into him, I think it goes from here to here to here. And Nunes' first thought is to go forward. This ball is hit first time into this midfielder here. Nunes instantly follows it, hears him running, getting on his bike. Then you've got this midfielder here who will play it into this forward. And Nunes continues his run. Now Nunes is darting into space here behind the high line that they're playing against. This is Braga they're playing against here. If this ball could come through from his teammate here, he is clean through and goal. And that is the kind of thing that Wolves have lacked, is that pace to the middle of the pitch when progressing play from defence to attack. Yeah, definitely. So th th they've been very much a counter-attacking team for four years. So nobody's produced more fast breaks or counter-attacks in, in the Premier League in the last four years as a whole. Um, and they've been very good at going side to side and building up play with the ball. Without the ball, very good at counter-attacking. But in terms of in terms of progressive play from midfield, they just haven't had the players to do it. However, you can see what Lodge is trying to do this season. They've had 60% possession in both of their games. Very unusual for Wolves. Um, but just somebody to link the play, break through the lines is, is what they lack. Well, I have an exact example of this because with the possession that Wolves have had, they've had very few shots on goal. I think it's 11 shots per game, which puts them about the bottom third in the table so far, only two games, small sample size, but it's similar to what we're seeing last season, even with more possession. But this is what Nunes can do. This is him here, number eight. 
And uh, another example of him turning defence to attack very quickly. Sporting are building up from the back, first phase of play. Ball comes in, and this is a straight pass from this guy into here. He's managed to find a little angle where the ball can thread through these players. That's a very clever play from him, positionally. Reading the play well. He takes it and instantly turns, knows there's a player on the, the left-hand side of him, and like waits a perfect pass into his path, which turns into attack. I think they might even get a shot or a goal from this, uh, with the ball coming in from a wide area. That's another example of Nunes being able to do that. Another thing we can do, is that we've seen him play, I mean that was against Wolves in pre-season, so they already know he can do this, but this is him against Man City in the Champions League. Sure enough, they get absolutely pumped, I think it's 5-0 in the end. But, Nunez's movement um, and ability to turn defence into attack is what will make him such a good player for Wolves going forward. So this is him playing against Man City here, playing as the pivot, dropping in from midfield two into the middle of the pitch here. Kevin De Bruyne is wanting to close him down. He's very aware of the situation, completely surrounded, receives the ball under pressure, first time pass out to a defender. That ball comes here, he instantly moves into space, recognises the only space really is here or here, makes the move, the pass comes into him, uh, receives this, as he's turning, De Bruyne right on his back. This is a dangerous situation, but he has the, just the skill and technique to be able to turn this and pivot a full like 270 degrees and takes De Bruyne out of the game, runs forward into this space again and turns the fence into attack instantly. And this is what Wolves are probably looking to do. And uh, we know that they want to have more possession this season. They've changed from the three to the, the four at the back. But what they do have currently, I mean, this, this guy will make the midfield much better. But what they're lacking is really a striker. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Raul Jimenez, sort of the, the complete number nine, really, in, the, in his first two seasons in the Premier League. Um, takes plays on, good in the air, good who's back to goal, and very good technically. Um, but the last couple of seasons, since he fractured his skull, you know, he's not quite been the same player. They, they are looking to bring someone in, but, but you, you can see just without him in the first couple of games, they've basically got six, six wide forwards. Um, in the squad now, there's San Gonzalo Guedes from Valencia. So you've got Neto and Gibbs White, who've who've been the two out wide so far this season. You've had Daniel Pedence in the ten, and then you've got Guedes Campbell, and time. Adama Traore, your, your freakish wild card, to come off the bench as well. <laughs> um, but like I said, it's it's these areas really where Pedence hasn't got the physicality to do that. He's he's only five foot five, um, defensive attributes not very good at all. Whereas Nunes adds physicality and creative attributes in terms of through balls. I know they're going out of fashion, but you know, we might try and play a few. Um, and then these combinations out wide, I mean, we've got Johnny here, it'll probably be Samedo when he's back to fitness, overlapping on the right. Ain't Nori, very, very quick, should have had an assist at the weekend down the left. So, um, so it should sort of bring Wolves' attack together a bit more in, in a way that we just haven't seen before. So there you go, that's Nunez, a player who's going to make Wolves much stronger, the squad much stronger, the first 11 much stronger, but they're still lacking the forward who will score the goals when Jimenez is not on form or in the team. So could be good for Wolves this year, will they make it into the top six? Yes. Yes, they apparently will, yes. Yeah. So to find out if that actually does happen and to find out what Tim thinks about that later in the season, subscribe to the channel. We'd love you to subscribe and join us again. Yes. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.